Hello YouTube, N3SDO here for part 3 in my multi-part video series on the Simple Spectrum Analyzer D6. In this video I will demonstrate using the Simple Spectrum Analyzer for testing an experimental 116 MHz Heliax notch filter designed similar to do-it-yourself 6 meter Heliax repeater duplexers. The information presented here is also applicable to testing filters or 2 meter or 440 band conventional duplexers also. A while back I had built a 116 megahertz notch filter as an experiment to learn the techniques for building the 6 meter Heliax duplexer. Using the simple spectrum analyzer and testing this stub I discovered two things. First that the tracking generator square waves coming from the simple spectrum analyzer cause errors in the graphing of the filter response. Second, I learned that the frequency of the tracking generator is not the same as the frequency displayed on the graph. This video describes my testing adventures with the D6 and finding problems that it has a frequency offset of about 110 kilohertz. For VHF and UHF antenna testing, this small of a frequency deviation is insignificant, but if you're tuning a VHF or UHF duplexer, 110 kilohertz could be a pretty significant error that can affect the performance of the duplexer and the repeater that it's being used with. Now let me move the D6 here and go over the stub. The stub is built from some scrap heliax left over from a cellular tower. It was too short to be used for uh, the 6 meter duplexers, but I figured I'd give it a shot. It might work for 2 meters, and either way it'd be good for some experiments. Cut the outer jacket away, and used a big iron to solder some wires across the bottom, and created a shorted quarter wave stub. The top is open electrically, and uses a capacitor to couple to the center conductor of the coax, and connect a feed externally with a BNC connector. At the end of the BNC connector is a T that I use to couple the input and the output to the stub. A couple wraps of electrical tape make it a bit less fragile. I tested the experimental 116 megahertz stub first with an MFJ antenna tuner. The impedance reads about 1 ohm at 116 megahertz at resonance and the SWR is the max that the MFJ can measure. The resistance increases quickly as the frequency is increased or decreased from 116 megahertz. The stub is 18 and a half inches long and mathematically it should resonate below the 2 meter band because of the velocity factor. I figured I could uh, to worse cut it a little bit shorter and shorten uh, or short the far end at a later time to adjust the electrical length. I, I can shorten it easily, but I really can't easily make it longer. The old joke of you, you cut it twice and it's still too short. No woodworker's joke. Well, I later took the stub to work and put it on a calibrated HP spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator to confirm uh, it was set to 116 megahertz, little adjustment and fine tuning, and it was right on the money. When I connected it to the D6, however, here's where things went weird. Instead of the expected sharp V-shaped notch, what I got was a wide and flat notch displayed across a much wider frequency range. This should not be. I expected a nice smooth linear curve that ends in a V-shaped notch. Now to take a step back, you think about the frequency synthesizers used in the D6 in the tracking generator. They output a square wave, not a sine wave. Square waves have a lot of harmonics and other energy in them. And I suspected that this is the reason for the odd flat-bottomed filter response. So I need a way to convert the square waves into sine waves. I had considered that the retuned 100 megahertz bandpass filter might be useful in converting the square waves into sine waves. 
So I hooked it up to the D6 and I tuned the filter to 116 plus 5 minus 5 and then put the bandpass filter in series with the Heliax notch filter. Needed a couple of adapters to make the required connections between the D6, the bandpass filter, and the stub. The bandpass filter should reshape the square waves. Then I used a nice piece of round coax in a loop to trap any residual square waves that might try and sneak through. Then uh, another cable to connect the output back to the spectrum analyzer. Now those of you who are in electronics for a while, you'll know that a square wave cannot go through a loop of round coax. Just kidding. Back to testing. Okay, here we go. There is the correct V-shaped notch shown within the response of the bandpass filter. But, notice that the frequency of the notch is not at 116 megahertz. It's low. Took a little bit of head scratching and tinkering, but I've come to the conclusion that the tracking generator is sweeping 110 kilohertz higher than the spectrum analyzer local oscillator, and the software is configured to display the spectrum analyzer local oscillator frequency, not the tracking generator frequency. I'm thinking, well, why wouldn't they just put them on the same frequency? Well, they wouldn't get any energy. If the tracking generator and the spectrum analyzer local oscillator were both on the exact same frequency, the tracking generator energy would be in the V of the notch at zero beat, which would basically have no energy to the detector. So it needs to be shifted away from the local oscillator frequency to have enough energy for detection. I don't know the exact frequency offset. I found no way that uh, I can measure the tracking generator offset or how to compensate for it in the software so it reads correctly. So you've kind of got to do it visually at this point. So this is a wrap up for this video. Next one in the series, I will start building the 6 meter duplexer. Till next time. 73s and 3SDO.